My name is Yayus Tubbs. I am workman of the Duwamish tribe and great, 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 great grandson of Chief Seattle. We've always known who we were. As little children, you run around in the woods on the west side of the Duwamish River, and the woods are all full of ferns and big trees. And you make rope swings on big trees, and you climb in, you play out in the woods. I grew up in the inland rainforests of British Columbia, and I grew up in a family that were loggers. <laughs> we spent all of our summers in the bush. I connected to the forest right from the very beginning. Trees and urban environments are absolutely essential for understanding our natural connection to the world. They're like people. <laughs> if you see them as equal partners in your life, then they become critical people in your urban environment. Trees benefit people in urban environments, and we know from nearly 40 years of research, people recover more quickly from surgery in hospitals. We see that children perform better in schools. We find that people may be doing better in the workplace if they have access to trees and views of nature. From birth to old age, having trees are valuable, and there's evidence of these benefits. What I've learned in the wild, I think, can easily be transferred back into how we live in our urban environments. And I think that we need to bring what we know from the wild forest into the urban environment. This idea of communication between trees is a new way of us articulating what is going on. We found that in this mature old growth forest, that every tree was connected to every other tree. Now that we've verified, we know it's a true phenomenon. Not only are these trees sending resources back and forth to each other, but also information. The definitive study which showed that these trees in nature are actually connected together by these mycorrhizal fungi. And when we started looking at all the connections, everything was connected to everything else. Up until a couple hundred years ago, when our people would pass, we would take them up to these very woods right here. And that's where we would bury them. We would bury them in the trees. The spring rains come, and all that stuff in the ground, it goes back up into the trees. And so grandma and grandpa literally live in the trees. And so we are literally connected to this ground as a people and to these trees. It was based on this kind of research, and we're finding it over and over, where we're verifying this with study after study after study that trees can recognize their kin and favor their kin. So we found that these trees were all connected to each other, and maybe this hub tree is connected to its neighbor. There's a family around her, but there's also a community because there's also strangers and other plants. There's a whole community involved in this network. <laughs> it's incredible. How do we connect one set of trees to another to not only improve the benefit to the trees, but also to ourselves. When we have more green, the air is cleaner, it's more comfortable, and people are more likely to be out and walking. The idea of nature remedies, much more likely if we have constant contact with trees. A lot of this comes down to economics. If people are healthier, if our water is cleaner, if our air is more healthy to breathe. If people are feeling better, and if kids are doing better in school, this is all about economics. As we have become a more urbanized nation, we're starting to recognize the, the value of having nature in the city. That small bit of garden, a tree, is incredibly valuable for health and quality of life. It's the cycle of life. It's like Grandpa said, Chief Seattle. We're just a strand in this web. We don't own the earth, we're part of the earth. And so it's very important for us to have healthy trees, to have them growing, to maintain that connection as a person, as a human being, to my ancestors that are in the trees and to this ground that we call Seattle.